Today we're going to be looking at questions that God asked us. Did you know that he asked us about our Sabbath rest? Stay with us. See where this goes. Welcome to Issues and Answers. My name is J.D. Quinn. Today, we're going to have a wonderful time with the Lord in that we're going to be talking about the questions that God asks us. And a person that's done a lot of study in this arena is Pastor Troy Fitzgerald. And I just am glad that you're here with us today. I want to welcome you. Thank you, you, J.D. First thing that we want to know, Troy, is a little bit about yourself. Is it okay I call you Troy? That's fine. That's what everybody else, that's the best thing that most people call me. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Well, tell us who you are. Tell us about your family. Tell us where you live. Tell us what your responsibilities are. Just want to know something about you. All right. Well, I'm the the pastor for youth and young and old um, at Walla Walla University Church. I've been there 12 years, and my wife, Julia, and Mm -hmm. um, I have been serving... um, in ministry, teaching, and pastoral ministry for almost 20 years now. And I have two boys, um, Cameron, who's about 13, and uh, Morgan, who's um, seven, going on 18. I guess they're typical boys. They (laughs) they probably like sports. They're boys, all boys. Yeah, you got to hose them off outside at the end of the day. (laughs) Amen, amen. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your education. Uh, well, I started um, studying just to be a pastor. I thought I wanted to be a teacher, a pastor. Um, I did my um, bachelor's in theology. And then afterwards, you know, I studied um, at the seminary. And then I noticed something that was interesting, and that was that most of the work of a pastor had to do with teaching. And I didn't know anything about teaching and, and teaching and telling teaching and preaching, um, learning and listening are sometimes two different experiences. And so I looked at Jesus as the master teacher. Mm -hmm. I thought, I need to learn how to teach. And so I got my master's in education so I could learn how to to teach. And then I eventually went on to do my doctorate in leadership. Amen. Why leadership? Uh, Just leaders um, and, and leadership is... One of those elements of our culture right now that uh, that are, are are posturing people towards change. We need um, to understand the fundamentals of leading people toward change. Mm-hmm. We live in a world that's broken. Um, our world has shifted. The world views of people in in this world have shifted, and we need to understand what it's going to take to move a group of people from this place into another era. And if you're out there thinking, oh, everything is just fine, or let's just do things the way we used to do, then um, you probably don't think leadership is very important. Mm. Um, But if you're looking for a new day, then leadership is one of the primary things that we need to be thinking about. So that's Mm. why I did it. Amen. One of the things that uh, this program is about questions that God asks and so, in your opinion, what is one of the most important questions that he asks of us? Well, that's hard because I believe that um, throughout Scripture, all of the questions that God asks have some sort of um, challenge to us mm-hmm. to either think um, about what's going on inside of our heart or what we're doing in our lives. Usually when God asks a question, it's usually because he wants us to respond. He wants us to think and stop and maybe do something differently to, um, to change. So uh, throughout then it's hard to just pick because, um, because so many of the ones that we have are good, and yet you try and count. I mean, I would ask the, the people in their homes today, just think about all the questions that you can list that God has asked people on their hands. And it's hard to come up with, but when you scan through Scripture, we see God interacting. One of the questions that um, has meant the most to me that's been perhaps the, one of the harder ones to answer is the question that Jesus asks people in church mm. about Sabbath rest. Mm-hmm. 
it's, it's one of those awkward moments um, that Jesus is in church, and if you're a pastor, the one thing you hope never happens is somebody stands up and causes a scene and breaks the routine. And, and yet, um, Sabbath rest should be the most important thing um, to us because it just because of what it means. And what, what does it mean? Well, well, it, it, the Sabbath is given to us because if we don't have Sabbath, um, our brokenness just turns to despair to the point where we forget who we are. I mean, we're running. We're, we're a people right now that it's running, we're running so hard. Mm -hmm. And right now, as you know, people are watching or listening, you know they're exhausted. Very few people are going to raise their hand and say, oh, I just feel so rested and ready. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I've got tons of energy and I'm ready to go. No, that's not it. In fact, um, some of the more recent surveys show that that people, 66, 67 percent of people out there describe themselves as exhausted or drained. Over 50 percent of people um, have responded and said that they feel overwhelmed. Mm. And I don't think it's getting any better. So when, um, and maybe it was the same back in the days of Christ. Maybe, you know, people were just as tired as they are now. Um, but we have things coming at us so fast right now. We have you know, the news is on TV. You have two faces up on the screen. They're arguing back and forth. Below, there's the weather. There's the ticker tape of the stock market. There's scores and highlights, and there's what's coming up next. It's all coming at us mm -hmm. at once, all the time. We're exhausted. Um, but back in the days of Christ, it was simple. They didn't have that, but people were still very tired. They're not tired necessarily from lack of sleep, but they're exhausted by trying to run their lives in their own brokenness, being held captive by their habits or by their fears or by loneliness or isolation. I mean, people are exhausted just based upon the depression mm. that's running through their veins right now. So that moment, I, I think it's in Luke 13 where the story's told where Jesus uh, walks into church and he's there and the Bible says that there's a woman who had been crippled, mm -hmm. bent over for, thir uh, for 18, years, 18 years, 18 long years. And, and they're reading and they're singing and they're praying and they're doing this stuff. And, and Jesus just has this visceral reaction to a woman that's been broken, bent over. I mean, all she has seen, you talk about tiring, <laughs> exhausting, mm. all you see are the cobblestones. Mm. All you see are, is the garbage in the gutters. When you walk to and from home or to the market, all you see are the feet, the dirty feet of people. You never, ever see the sunshine. You don't feel it on your face. The wind doesn't blow on your cheeks. You don't look and listen to the birds singing in the air. Those things don't, aren't a part of your reality. You're walking and you're bent over and you're down. And that's the way you've been for 18 years. And Jesus could not stomach it. Mm. And so he does something on Sabbath in church that, well, it got the saints a little riled up. And he, he healed her. He just said, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And she stood up. Amen. She could sing now. You know how the choir directors tell us to sing? Amen. You have to, you know, chin up, mouth wide open. She's singing. Amen. And, um, and, the, and the leaders, well, they were disrupted by that. They didn't like that. And Jesus heard them. And one of them actually mm -hmm. stood up and said, no, there are six days in which, and you can just see the frown on mm -hmm. there, six days in which you, you come for healing. But on the Sabbath day, no. And Jesus is saying, wait a minute, I think I gave you this rule a long time ago. And it was not... It was, it was supposed to be about freedom. Do you remember Amen. the story? And so he says, he asks the question, and I think it's a question not just for that day, but for us today. He said, isn't, it, this, isn't this what God wants us to do on the Sabbath? He says, this child, should not this child of Abraham, this daughter of Abraham, be set free on the Sabbath day? Amen. And how are you going to answer that question? Because he invoked something very unique there. 
he called her a daughter of Abraham. Mm. He says, you will... They understood yeah. that. Oh, yeah, because he pointed out, he says, don't you know? You guys know it. You'll untie your dog if it's caught tied up around a tree. You won't leave it out there. If your ox falls into the ditch, you'll pull your ox out. A dog, an ox. This is not a dog. This is not an ox. This is not your pet pig. This is a daughter. Amen. A princess, a daughter of Abraham. And she's bent over. And you're angry because we set her free on the Sabbath? Don't you even know about rest? Is, that's really Jesus' question. Is, have you not experienced the rest? of the Sabbath. And that applies to probably a lot of us today. Well, ask, you know, a lot of, yeah. lot of people are very confused. Yeah. Ask, mm. ask the question to yourself today. Yes. Are you, are you, are you whole? Are you, do you feel rested? Mm -hmm. Have you experienced the true Sabbath rest? And as Adventists, that's been in our name. It's been a part of our life, our theology for years. We know where it came from. Well, why is the Sabbath so important? It's because it's given to us at creation before sin. Amen. We have the Sabbath. It's, it's not just a part of God's salvific plan. This is a part of who we are as humans. It's our birthday. Your birthday doesn't come around once a year. It comes every week where Amen. you are reminded that you are a born-again child of God. You are made in His image. Amen. And if you skip it, if you miss it, if you work through it, if you ignore it, if you focus all on your own stuff through it, you are going to forget who you are. And that's one of the reasons why God gave it. And, uh, you know, the, the example I always give is go to the Old Testament when God's people were put into slavery. They, they not only disobeyed God, but they just, they just fell back into the world where they were absorbed by Egypt. They started to think like Egypt instead of God's children. They started to act like Egypt. They worshiped like Egypt until their minds were changed and they mm -hmm. were Egyptians in every sense of the word. If there was anything in them that was this story way back in history, something that they may, maybe remember that their grandparents telling them about, about Yahweh, about Amen. the God of Israel. And when God delivered them, he brought them out here we have God's people out on the sandy shore of the Red Sea. You know, they're being told, guess what? It's time to meet your God. He's your creator. Wait a minute. I thought we were created by a cow or this golden emblem over here or this animal over here. But no, it was God. Amen. And, and they are told the story and they're given the law. And in the, in the law it says, six days God created the heavens and the earth. He made you. And the seventh day he rested. And that's, and he sanctified it, he set it aside. Not because he wanted to give us a rule, not because we needed a day to go to church, not because, you know, of all these theological ramifications, because he knew that if you didn't celebrate your birthday, you would forget Amen. who you are and who you belong to. And in the end, where you're going. I mean, that's why the law is given a second time, isn't it? Because in Deuteronomy, we have the same reading of the law, except there's one little difference to it. It says, because I redeemed you, because I delivered you from Egypt, that's why you have the Sabbath day. Celebrate the Sabbath, because don't you know, I took you out of Egypt? Well, who is he saying that to? He's saying that to the people who were born in the desert. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy is written to people who were born in the desert. No one was there in Egypt. They don't even know what Egypt looks like. They don't know what the, the plagues were all about. They were in the desert. And he says, you were delivered. So two places. In the law that Moses gave, you're created by God. Don't forget who you are. Amen. Don't forget that birthday. You were delivered. You were saved. Even though you're born here in the desert and all you've known is sand and all you've heard about is the promised land, we're going home, we're going home, we're going home. Well, Here's why, because someone delivered us. And that's why in, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about Sabbath rest, Amen. and it's connected with salvation, the rest of salvation for your souls. I mean, people are tired. I love that story, um, <laughs> J.D. I love the story of this um, dog named Tattoo. Okay. Um, it was a story I read in the Seattle Times, I think it was. This um, owner, Tattoo's owner, um, you know, got in the car and backed up, but the leash 
Tattoo's leash got caught in the door, the back door. Mm. And Tattoo was spotted chasing after the car. And they were going down some of the back streets, but Tattoo mm. was having a hard time keeping up. One foot in front of the other. And it's a basset hound. And you know, they, they, <laughs> they don't go very fast and they're not, not very long legged. And Tattoo was trying as hard as he could to keep up one foot in front of the other as fast as those little paws could carry them. Clock speeds up to, I think, one police saw what was happening and clocked the dog going up to 20 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, before he pulled the, the car and the dog over and Tattoo was tired. Mm. And I think a lot of people out there today feel that exhausted. Mm, exactly. Like all they can do is think about one foot in front of the other and they're exhausted. They don't have a rest. They don't have an identity. They don't have a sense of who they are and where they're going. They don't have that notion of the promised land. Mm -hmm. They don't know how they're going to get there because they know they're broken. They know they're lost. And who's going to save them? Who's going to be their deliverer? And so they're just running as fast as they can. And they don't know where they're going. They don't know where they're going. They just know that they just got to move that, that foot forward. And they're exhausted. And that's why in our world today, um, even as it was back in the days of Christ, we need, we need a Sabbath rest. We need to stop and take a look yeah. where we've been. And uh, it, it seems like to me that I'm beginning to notice that uh, lots of people are beginning to look more at the Saturday Sabbath. In fact, I, you know, I thought 10 years ago, I think I picked up a, um, a little journal. It's called Discipleship Journal. And in it was a whole series on the Sabbath. And I looked every word of the article, all the way down to maybe one sentence at the end. It sounded like something that I'd write, or one of my professors would write, or one of my pastors in the Adventist church would write. What's going on out here? Book after book after book is being released now um, that has to do with the Sabbath. And it's not just the Adventists that are talking about it. We've been talking about it for over 150 years, and we're just going back through history, um, you know, through the 17, 15, 16, 1700, Sabbath was being kept. And going back even through the Middle Ages, God has had a people. It's been a commandment-keeping people that have always mm -hmm. responded. There's always been someone staying connected to who they are and where they're going, that identity. Um, going all the way back to the time of Christ, the New Testament church. Um, but of late, uh, I don't know what's causing it, and I don't know what the resurgence is all about, but I think it has to do with the fact that humanity has come to need Sabbath from an experiential point of view. The theology's been out there for a long time, but now we just feel tired. We feel empty. We feel disconnected. We feel like we don't know where we came from. We don't know why we matter, why it makes a difference. And we don't know where we're going. We just know that it's uncertain, and it's scary for a lot of people. And the, the beauty of that one truth of the Sabbath takes us and wraps us up together and binds us to God in an unmistakable, eternal way. I just don't want to let go. I want to answer that question. Why should not we be free, set free on the Sabbath? Why not? <laughs> Why not celebrate it? And so that's just one of those questions that from week to week I have to ask. Amen. And so as, as one of these youth would come up to you and they ask this question, and I imagine it's going to become uh, asked more often yeah. because people are looking for truth right now. Oh, So how do you handle it? Oh. I mean, they'll say, what do you do on the Sabbath? I mean, how can I keep the Sabbath? That's true. You know, in Deuteronomy, it's not just today, but in Deuteronomy chapter 6 where it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. It says in verse 20, just read on through that chapter in verse 20. In verse 20, it says that one of these days, your children are going to come up to you and say to you, hey, what's up with all these uh, rules and regulations? And why do we have to do this? And why can't I do that? And why do I do that? And, and you can say, because the Bible says so, because God mm -hmm. says so. Yeah, that answer is too cheap. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough. You have to answer it more fully. And the answer that we are told to give in Deuteronomy is, tell them that you were a slave in Egypt mm. and God brought you out with, mm -hmm. with a mighty hand. Tell them that, that 
God delivered you as he landed the plagues on Pharaoh. Tell them about how the Red Sea parted and you walked there on that soft sand looking at the fishes like walls alongside of glass. Tell them the story of your redemption. So when they do ask, that's what Scripture tells us to do. Tell about the story of your history, your past, how you were redeemed, how you were born. And I had a kid come up to me and I was, I was studying the Bible with him. I was, I was just saying, Jeremiah, I, you know, you know, you have any questions about the Sabbath? And this, this young person's very devoted to God, but he's very sequential. He wants to know exactly what there is to do and what not to do. And I'm trying to get through to him and say, this is about who you are. You, you get to take what God has said and you flesh this out in the best way you can. I told him, do good, save lives, go and worship. Share the gospel. There are a million things that Jesus did on the Sabbath. Walk through the grain fields with your friends and, and talk about the kingdom. Be with the people, but, but give yourself. Liberate people on the Sabbath of their brokenness. Whatever, it, it may be with a song or a gift of kindness or a word of encouragement. It might be a prayer that you pray on their behalf. Lift them up. And he's saying, yeah, but to, I, don't, I want to know what not to do. Hmm. I have to admit, I got kind of frustrated with him. And on my desk there, as we were studying, I, th I gave them my best. Mm -hmm. And I said, Jeremiah, grab that bottle of water that's sitting there in front of you. And he picked it up. And I said, I want you to tell me. I'll tell you exactly what not to do. I'll give you the longest list that you've ever asked for. Long one. I said, if you tell me what's not in that bottle of water. <laughs> and he, he looked at me and I said, well, go ahead and get started. What's not in there? Ketchup? Chili? No. no. Bread? Is there, uh, you know, is, is there lettuce in, in, in water? Go ahead, let's just start making a list. And he threw his head back. He says, that would take forever. I said, and I think that's what Jesus was getting at. Hmm. There are a million things that you can focus on about what not to do. The Sabbath, that's not why he, he gave you the Sabbath, to avoid things. The Sabbath in Mark 2, verse 26, 27, it says, The Sabbath is a gift for you Amen. to remember who you are and where you come from. You're not made to keep this. That's not why I created you. The Sabbath came after I made you. It's the present. It's your birthday cake. This is the thing that you embrace and experience so that you never, ever, never forget who you are, who you belong to, and where you're going. And um, How did he respond? <laughs> well, it took a while, but he started to get it. And I have to admit, um, later, I just as I talked with him, I baptized Jeremiah, and oh, he's yeah. a, a full-on believer of Christ. But one of the things that he's doing, and he's going to have to do, is he's going to have to answer the question, so how, do, how should I live this day out? How should I be and who should I be about on this day? One of the things that Christ will tell us um, just by his example in Scripture is to be about doing good. Mm -hmm. Be about giving um, what Jesus calls a cup of cool water to someone. You want to experience rest? Release people from their bondage. We get... We get thrown into bondage lots of ways. There are people who are just fully depressed and they're out there. Many of them are going to be watching and they need to know that there is freedom. Amen. There is a rest. There's a rest from your loneliness because if, if, if you're alone, you'll be kept up awake all the time and it eats away and pulls at you. There's a rest from your loneliness. There is a God who remembers you, who knows you, who wants to abide with you. And if you get so busy during the course of the week, he has given you a day to stop and have a piece of cake. Amen. Have a birthday. Remember who you belong to. Um, there are people who are just going through unthinkable tragedy and uncertainty. They don't know where the, the next check is going to come from. They don't know how they're going to keep the lights on. There are people around the world that don't know where their next meal is coming from. They're worried about family and friends. There are many um, out there today who just worry 
about all of their lost friends and family. And, and there's so much uncertainty. They need the rest. We all do. And then there are those people who are just working day and night, whether it be for the gospel or for their own cause. And that was one of the reasons why I think God gave us the Sabbath. It's because he made us to be workers. I mean, the whole idea of work came before sin, too. You're going to work this earth. Mm -hmm. You're going to struggle with it. You're going you're to plant it. It's going to grow, and you're going to have to work it out. You're going to be tired. He made us that way. But the one thing I think God must have been afraid of is that one day, if we forget who we are, we'll define ourselves by what we do. And there's nothing better than going to a, a birthday party because it's yes. always fun. And if we could have a birthday party once a week, if we could truly get that concept down, that we're with our brothers and our sisters, we're with our favorite people, yeah. and we're getting to share something special. And, and there's this celebration of who you are. Now, there's no meritorial thing going on at a birthday party. We don't stand up and list off the achievements mm -hmm. of our six-year-old daughter. You did this and you did that. What do we remember at the birthday? We remember, we think about the moment, we bring out the pictures. And when we fold our hands and we pray, where there's cake and presents and food and friends and hats and candles and all kinds of things, we stop and we pray the prayer. God, thank you that Susan was born. Amen. That we receive this gift from you, this gift of life. And, and that's what we pray for. Amen. And that's what we pray about. Think about that. We don't, um, we don't, we don't go down the badges and the trophies and the accomplishments. You were born. The same is true for God's people. We're born of God in his image, created after him, intended for a purpose, going a direction. We got off track. Sabbath is meant to keep us back on track to who we were and who we, where, uh, where we belong and where we're going. And um, I would just invite people today to answer that question. Is it not for you? Does Jesus not say to you today, you were made for something greater. Don't you want to be set free? Yeah. Don't you want to have that Sabbath rest? Amen. Amen. Well, as you can see, we're running out of time again. Uh, this is such a, wonderful, uh, such a wonderful topic because we all need that rest. Yeah. And yes, indeed, we're all running so fast. But I just want to thank you for being here today because it's just... Uh, You've got a good grasp of this. Thank you. And I know that if I had been a youth, I would have loved to have had a youth <laughs> pastor like you. Thank you. That's so, kind. Just want to thank each one of you for being with us today on Issues and Answers. You know how special you are to us here at 3ABN. We love each and every one of you, and we wish you only the best.